from the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Lorraine Day, Phil Williams, and Robert Mitchum in Till the End of Time. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Some seven billion servicemen from the Army, Navy, and Marines have returned to civilian life. Many of them have been wounded. All have lost precious months and years of use. And because of this, they've had to face many problems of adjustment. Problems that have their elements of humor, tragedy, and high romance. And these are the elements of our play tonight. Arthur Rose's timely and dramatic scene hit, Till the End of Time. Here's the curtain for the first act of tonight's play. Starring Lorraine Day as Pat, Bill Williams as Cliff, and Robert Mitchum as Bill Cabotor, with Tony Barrett as Terry. <laughs> Los Angeles, a Saturday afternoon in the fall of 1945. A young Marine has just turned the corner and started eagerly toward a small cafe. Suddenly he stopped gazes into the cafe with amusement and wonder, and then enters. Well, no chummy, Chubby. Cliff! Cliff Hopper! Oh, yes, Chubby. Oh, Cliff, you're back. I sure am. <laughs> well, look at those service women. Hey, you did all right, Chum. You did all right yourself. <laughs> Why, when I left here, this was a coat problem. Yeah. Soft drinks and ice cream. Now look at it. Well, I've had a liquor license for two years now. Yes, you've even got a place to dance. Please suck it. Good going. How about a drink? You bet. But put your money away, Chum. It won't buy anything here. Not until tomorrow. Oh, thanks. Say, have you seen Pinky Barnes? Pinky? Well, now, we're not for the last three minutes, huh? <laughs> hey, Pinky, Pinky, look what the Marines threw back. Yeah. Hiya, Pinky. Hello, Pete. Hey, this is great. When did you get in? Got out the train an hour ago. Well, come on back and sit down. How was it, Cliff? Oh, it was all right. How was it with you? Well, in the air, it was fine. The minute I hit the flight ticket, it drove me nuts. Yeah, I'll bet. Uh-oh, Pat. Pat Ruskin, Cliff Harper. Hi. Hello. What are you in, huh? Well, if you aren't careful, you're going to get maudlin. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you want to leave, Pinky? No, believe it or not, I'm staying in the Navy. I'm crazy, eh? Always were. Say, how are you folks? I don't know. You don't know? Well, I sort of figured I'm surprising them this afternoon, except they surprised me. They weren't home. I was shopping again. You uh, going back to college, sir? Maybe, I, I don't know. I, oh, I, I hope you'll forgive us, Miss Rusty. You're running away like this. I'll listen well. Where are those people you were with, Pat? Bring them over here. They're dancing. Oh, uh, would, uh, would you like to dance? If you would. Okay, Pinky? Oh, sure, it's okay. Go ahead. You were here with Pinky, Miss Russell. My name is Pat. I just happened to be talking to people when you came in. Those other people don't matter. You came here alone? Yes, but I'm driving you home. You know that, huh? Mm-hmm. You told me. I'm glad you understand my language. Not many people do. Are you ready to leave? Don't you want to say goodbye to anyone? I'll say goodbye tomorrow. You ready? Sure, I'm ready. Let's go. insisted on leaving you on your own doorstep. Hmm, but my folks still hadn't come home. So this is where you live, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a bit on the elegant side, but it's home. I share it with a friend of mine who works for the government. It said she's been in Washington for the last three months. He's in more room, doesn't he? Yes, it does. Glad to be home? Mm-hmm. You're kind of rugged, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. Now what do we talk about? Not much of a talk. To me. What if I don't? You will. Like the way you kiss. Mm -hmm. And I've got something to tell you, and it's true. So I went to Stuffy's Cafe, and funny things started to happen. Couldn't wait to put my arms out. <laughs> don't be frightened. It isn't love. I don't think so. What is it? Oh, lots of things. Growing up, a year in the Pacific, a jukebox joining in, and then a room like this that's not too crowded. All those things. Half of them do not. <laughs> Most of the grown-ups are too gay. If you're laughing at me, I don't like it. Why? It's like good. Huh? That photograph on the table, who is he? John Ruskin, First Lieutenant, OAS Bomber Command. Who is he? My husband. Uh, I don't know what to say. If I hadn't had a picture here, I don't think I would have cared one way or another whether you were married or not. But this way, I don't like me and I don't like you. Hooray! Where is he? The buried him, you think. Oh, I... Uh, I know, you're sorry. I'm sorry, too. And now you're leaving. Don't you think that's better? In a minute. I met John about two years ago. It, it happened like that. And the way he went up into the wild blue yonder... 
bed, torn into two. He was killed on his third instant. They sent me a package with some of his things, but I never opened it. I sent it to his family. You ought to get Purple Heart to war with him. Yes, sweet, thanks. Oh, I'll see you again. I hope so. I'd like to kiss you goodbye, but, but the room is too crowded. So long, Ted. Goodbye, Cliff. <laughs> Oh, now, Ma, take it easy. Look, look, you think that you came home? That's the only thing you came home and we were even here. But you're here now, Ma. There's no reason to cry. Look at me, I'm fine. Oh, my boy. My boy. Yes, I've been saving it all the time you were gone. Hey, when, boy. Dad, you want to make him sick? <laughs> That's fine, Dad. Women don't understand us fighting names, Chris. Well, glad to have you back, son. Glad to be back, Dad. Cliff, I was just thinking we can go down tomorrow and get some new clothes for school. Cool. We'll be going back to college, dear. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't know what I'll do. I, I'd like to think about it first. Oh, well, maybe you're right. Think it over for a couple of days. Say, Ma, did anybody name Bill Tabish or Tyler Eaton? Tabish? A pal of mine from the service. No, dear, no one to that name. Oh, nothing important. Gosh, I've got so much to talk about, I don't know where to begin. I want to tell you where I've been and what no, I've No, no, don't talk about it, Chris. I know you don't want to talk about it. None of the boys ever... Chris, Chris, are you sure you're all right, dear? Sure, Ma. I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Hiya, Claire. Hiya, Pinky. Just in time for Sunday morning breakfast. Oh, thanks, but I got a breeze. Just stop by to see how you're doing. Okay. What did you do last night? My folks had company. Turned out to be a home thing. Oh, I had one of those things. Turned out to be murder. Yeah. Half of them were afraid if they said anything, they'd accept me, and the other half were afraid if I said anything, they'd accept them. Well, let's face it, nobody's going to listen to us. Why don't we take an hour off sometime? You tell me what you did, and I'll tell you what I did. You're on, Phil. In the meantime, how about some ice cream? I've got a date with that gal. What gal? Pat. The gal you took out of Scotty's yesterday without saying goodbye to me. Oh, oh that gal. Oh, well, come on along. I'll keep giving it up. Oh, I can't get a date that fast. Well, come anyway. Hey, what about Steve? Oh, don't worry. You can let him there. Wait a minute. What about Pat? What do you mean, what about Pat? Oh, I skipped the details. If she is, or if she ain't your gal. That's nobody's gal. Not anymore. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Yeah, I just convinced myself I'm no ice here. How about some coffee? What about Pinky? Well, he likes ice here. So do I. But as long as we're here in front of the stand, we might... Two coffee, please. Yes, sir. Come on, sit down. Uh, what's the name of the like that? A little town you've never heard of. Yeah, well, tell me. I'll look it up on the map. Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Chippewa Falls. I'll remember that. You've got enough to remember. I'm forgetting things, so I'll have more room. You ought to try that sometime. I will. Sometime. What's your lake or a river in Chippewa Falls? A river filled with deadheads. Hmm, anyone I know? A deadhead is a piece of timber that's been waterlogged. It's just fixed in a river going no place. Then well, it is someone I know. What's the matter? She's under the pond of that. I told you. She's real, isn't he? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess he is. Excuse me a minute. Hiya, dog face. Close in, Marine. I'm getting this chase. Well, go ahead. Hey, thanks. Anybody looking? What if they are? The doctor said they'd wear off in time. I'm fine, see? And all of a sudden, I start this. Why don't you get home and, and things about not here this time? I'm not going home. My folks would go nuts if they saw me like this. I couldn't take it. Where do you live, Dorgan? Or is the Idaho? I got a 21-day pass. Thanks. I, I guess I better take back to the hospital. You're being afraid to go home. Reminds me of myself. My first friend. My mother made my dressing, and I was so convinced that it was awful. But every time a boy came up and asked me to dance, I was afraid to get out on the floor. I was, I was afraid people would laugh. I, I was panicking. But I finally said to myself, the two guys said, this is your first dance, and it's going to be your last dance. And if you stop me, so you'd just look and, and beat this here and now. While I was having this big argument with myself, a cute little boy comes up and asks the girl next to me. Before I knew what I was doing, I, I grabbed him, and I was dancing. And after that, it, it was a thing. You figure I can beat this by taking up dancing? All I'm saying is, let them look. And if they don't like it, let them kill themselves. Sure. Let them kill themselves. Thanks. You're a good girl. That's us. Serve us with a smile. You okay now? Yeah, yeah. I think I'll get some air. Thanks again. So long. I hope you don't go home. You handled him well. No. Yeah. My well, coffee's cold. I'll get some more. Never mind. Let's see. Well, I wanted to talk to you. I'd rather sleep. Okay. You'll sleep. <laughs> Cliff, wake up. Yeah. Yeah, Dad. I'm, uh, I'm going on downtown, Cliff. See you tonight at dinner? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. 
Since you've been home now for two weeks, don't you think it's time you were settling down or something? I can't seem to get my mind on it, Dad. Oh, now, that's just nonsense, son. Oh, uh, your new suit, Dave. I might hope you charge it like I told you to. Well, I still have plenty of cash, Dad. Thanks, anyway. Oh, what about college? It opens Monday. You made up your mind about that yet? I made up my mind about one thing, and that's not to make up my mind for a long while yet. Sure, sir, sure. Oh, by the way, that friend of yours telephoned Bill Tabishaw. Bill, yeah. so he'll be over here in a half an hour. Gee, that's great. I'm glad to see something take you up, Chris. Well, see you tonight. Ah, here he is, Ma. This is Bill Tabishaw, the kitchen coagulating by way of Stinkin' Creek, New Mexico. Now, how did you know you were here? This is just having breakfast, like some waffles. No, thanks, ma'am, but a cup of coffee would be mighty fine. Well, start sounding off, will you? Where have you been, and how's that hunk of metal in your stone? Hey, I'm getting like a silver plate, but in my own head. <laughs> Sit down, Ma. Listen to the scuttlebutt. Thank you, Mr. Tavisaw. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, well, uh, what happened in San Diego? Well, I'm hailed by a couple of couple of girls who are going to see one and they get some nylon. Uh, you know me, I tag along and I get picked up by a couple of promoters who want to play a little red dog. I figure they know I'm loaded, so I pay them very close. I clip them for 2,100 feet. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Still got it? I'm going to keep it. I'm checking a train for Stink and Creek tonight. Tonight? Yes, sir. Day after tomorrow, I'll leave us going the line for a little old ranch and I'm raising steers. Now, here's it. What have you got on the roster for today? You tell me. Well, i got to make a slight social call. You got a sister? No, no. No, it's a boy that was laying next to me in the hospital. You know, Terry Chinslow used to be a prize fighter. Pretty good, too, I guess. does not got any legs anymore. Once Terry gave me a silver dollar for good luck. I got the luck, too, so I figured he raised 10% of the dough. He's home now. He's here in Los Angeles. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, Ma. Let me finish my coffee. Miss Harper, it's been a pleasure meeting you, ma'am. If you ever get to think and take me in Mexico, you... But, uh, Bill, I don't ever expect I will. You now, sometimes I wish my Ma had said that same thing years ago. Well, uh, let's go, kid. Well, Miss Harper, you're going to have to go to Los Angeles with me. What do you mean it's mine? I just told you, and I'll take it. Yeah, it's well up, you told, but I don't need it. Look, I want you to have it. No. Hey, no, Bill, thanks. You, uh, see something out the window there, Hopper? Yeah. Who's the kid in the backyard, punching the bag? I'm a kid, brother. Looks pretty good. Yeah. You see, I used to be a boxer. But they're not signing boxers without legs, you see. Hey, take it easy. I'm man. okay, I'm all right. You're not a minus you here so much anymore. Not when I can look out the window and see how swell that kid's coming along. All this yammer working his wind is silent. Next year I'll teach him tiny. I'll work on that kid every year until he's 16. That's when I had my first thought, and that kid will be ready, too. You, uh, you ain't by any chance trying to put your life into his, are you, Tony? Why not? I've got no life of my own left. Now, don't go giving me that. What are you in a wheelchair for, anyway? They gave your legs at the hospital. Put them on, mate. Put them on. Artificial legs? Oh, boy, you got no idea what they're like. And the one who murdered me, number two, after I got him out, what have I got? Cowboy, you just got no idea what I feel when I get... Let my mother look at me like this. I get sick in my stomach and she has to help me in the chair, let me back in the bed. I'm 21 and I'm dead. Now listen, dummy. I'm pulling out the sink and quick tonight. But when I get back, I want to see you with those legs on. I want to see you kicking them around like you were born with them. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess you can. That's what the man said. Well, have a nice trip. Yes. Send for five dollars. Huh? So long, Hopper. Stop on again, huh? I'll be by, Terry. I'll be here. Thank you for stopping by. Both of you. Oh, oh, I, uh, I thought I'd better leave this money with you, Miss Kingsley. Money? What for? I owe this to Terry. I borrowed it from him when we were up in the hospital. You're, you're sure? Man, that's $200. I wouldn't be giving it to you unless I was awful sure. Don't you worry about Terry, Miss Kingsley. He's going to be okay. I get two more, will you, Stuffy? Okay, sir. You know, Bill, that Terry, he's never going to put on those artificial legs. Yeah, and what he says makes sense. That's what rocks you. You know, when I left him up at Mayor Allen, he was coming along good. I guess that's because there were thousands of guys all around us in the same fix. The war was still on. It was, it was like when we hit the beaches. Well, we were a team, everybody together. But now we're civilians again. We're individuals. There's nobody to tell us what to do or when to do it. We're on our own. Terry, you, me, all of us. Now we've been yapping for it. Now we've got it. I'm all mixed up, Bill. I don't know what I want. Me? I want that ranch is thinking quick. Uh, hello, Pat. Excuse me a minute, Bill. You wear yourself out drinking rum and coke all afternoon. I haven't been doing it all afternoon. Oh, where have you been? Back in the social call. Anybody I know? You don't want to know him. You can't tell. I know a lot of people. What about tonight? Busy? Yes, I'm busy. I like your new suit. No brass buttons, but I'll get used to it. You like my new dress? I can't see anything but your eyes. Your, 
Yes, sir, about tonight. Very good. Here he is now. Hiya, Pat. Hi, Captain Wilson, ex-Marine Hopper. How do you do? Hiya, Captain. Well, I'll see you later, Pat. Well, who's the babe, Clifford? My best friend. Oh, a man's best friend's his mother. Well, I got a show. Where are you going? I got to catch a train, don't you remember? I'll grab a taxi. Now, take my advice and get some traveler's checks for all that dough. Sure, 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 sure. Anything else, Clyde? Yeah. Keep punching, Bill. Take it easy, Clifford. You'll be good. <laughs> Yeah. But wait, that's good. Where have you been? I've been out. Well, you're not coming home, you would have called your mother instead of letting her worry your head off. I'm sorry, Ma. I just didn't think. That's one of the troubles, Clifford. You never do any thinking anymore. Ma, please, lay off of me. Where are you going? Your father and I'd like to talk to you for a moment. Oh, sure. Cliff, your mother and I haven't been seeing much of you lately. We'd just like to ask you where you've been and if you've been happy. What your father trying to say is that we've been very disappointed in your behavior. Why are you disappointed? Well, you come home, grab a bite to eat, and then you're off again. I suppose you've got a bad new line, boys like this Jim Cabotorn. Well, I just think that that's the sort of... Time Cabotorn's my buddy, Ma. It's so hard to say it, son. Well, it's, it's just not like old times, boy. Yeah, I know. Maybe that's because old times are three and a half years ago, Dad. But we had plans. Plans about the present, about your, your future. Well, maybe I have to make my own plans about the future, Ma. Yes, we, uh, we were supposed to go to the gardens tonight. You were invited, too. No, oh, you, you go ahead. I, I think I'll have a beer and hit the sack. There's a cold place in the ice box there. And if you feel better, come on over and join. Thanks. I'll see. Hello? Hello? Hello, Pat. This is Cliff. Cliff? Yes? About tonight. No, I haven't. Yeah, yeah, I know. Captain Winthrop. I mean, when you get home, if I could come over and... Please, maybe tomorrow. Tonight? I, I want to see you tonight. No, Pat. I'm sorry. I'm coming over, Pat. You're my best friend, remember? What? Never mind. I'll see you later. In just a moment, we'll be back with the second act of Till the End of Time. Starring Lorraine Day, Robert Nixon, and Bill Williams. The very tissue and fiber of America is the United States Congress. The Senate and House are each alive and urgent as the color and drama of the moment unfolds. Part of this color began in the Senate yesteryear, when much of the maneuvering was done around giant silver urns or small black lacquered boxes that stood for years in the Senate chamber. Snuff came in with ruffled shirts, lace cuffs, and wigs. And somehow, perhaps as a symbol of those bygone privileged days, it never really went out. The original urns were huddling places for the lawmakers, and many a bill was scented with the aroma of a legislator's favorite snuff. Today, the snuff boxes are largely unused, but a custodian still has orders to keep them fresh and full. They aren't the inspiration they once were, but the tiny black lacquered boxes are still very much there, a reminder of the tradition that started when snuff came to Capitol Hill. Mr. William Keeley returns to the microphone. We continue with the second act of tonight's play. Till the End of Time, starring Lorraine Day as Pat, Bill Williams as Cliff, and Robert Nixon as Bill, with Tony Barrett as Perry. <laughs> it's past midnight, and for an hour now, Cliff Hopper, jealous, confused, depressed, has clung to the shadows surrounding Pat Reston's house. Now he sees her return, a little gray after a tour of the city's right stop. She also sees her kiss Captain Winthrop good night, then approach the front door. Uh, wait a minute. Officer, there's a man following me. I told you I'd be here. You did? Oh, go away, Cliff. I had a reason for coming. Oh, at least I thought I did until I look at you now. Have a cigarette. Have a drink. Then have it something. I thought I told you I was going to be busy tonight. So you were busy? So I was busy. What did you want to see me about? I can say it all in one minute. Fine, I'll time you. I never thought I'd see a girl as rotten as you are. I still need you 50 seconds. <laughs> Can I come in? Sure, come in. I brought you some hot coffee. Here. If I'd wanted coffee, I would have made it. You still owe me 50 seconds. I don't owe you anything except the price of that coffee. You tell me how much I'll pay you and you can get out of here. Oh, come on, drink it. 
I tell you how I got my silver star. I don't want to know anything about you. Oh, I'll take a sip. Then, then I'll go. You, you've been crying. Have I? I'm sorry I said what I did. And I came back to tell you. That's very generous. I know I shouldn't have acted that way. But I was beginning to think of you as my girl. Try to see it my way, Pat. You're smart. There are lots of smart girls like me. We had a choice to make, and we made it. John married me because when he went away to war, he wanted to dream of home. That's why I married him. I wanted him to have that dream. But then I didn't count on it. The, the end of the war and, and John coming home would be my dream. The war's over, and John isn't coming home. And I'm stuck with my dream. Patricia, I said to myself, this is your first dance, and it's going to be your last, unless you stop being so ridiculous and keep this here now. That's what the girl said to the soldier, Pat. That's exactly what she said. What am I going to do, please? What am I going to do? Well, right now you're going to lie down and you're going to sleep and stop thinking. It's no good to you. No good at all. burned up when I saw you with that captain. When well, I saw you kiss her. That captain was John's co-pilot. He was passing through town on his way east. He talked about John and the war. We had a lot to drink. He told me so much about John that I wanted to know it. But somehow, just for a moment, he almost seemed to be John. Is that all right? Yes, that's all right. Pat, I'm lonesome. There's nobody. Nobody? Well, my pal's gone back to New Mexico and my folks... What's the matter with your folks? I don't know. I, I don't know what's the matter with me either. I, we just don't seem to get along. You know why you're lonesome? You have nothing to do with me, What are you, a blank? Oh, well, I mean, work, a uh, job. What kind of a job? I, I don't know. What have you ever done? I went to school and I went to war. Well, a job wouldn't help. I, I guess I just don't fit in any place yet. Well, that's father's office. Too easy. M- maybe later on, but what do you do? Radio, phone jack, training company. They manufacture them. You think I could get in there? They're hiring veterans every day. It'd be nice being close to you all the time. Would it? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm thinking about? I think I go to work Monday. That's a nice, clean decision. Try and make it last through the day. Give me the night present and then go home. Sure. I'll go home. Good night, Ted. You know, it's a funny thing, Harper. Now, take the four of us here. Now, we all work for Turner and Company, don't we? Well, I've lasted for ten days, anyway. Oh, no, 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 no. What I mean is you from the Marines, me, the Navy, Bianchi here, the Air Force, and Benny, the Army. Our fighting force, 100% represented at the Radio Thunder event. Hey, you guys doing anything about joining up any of them veterans' organizations? Ah, uh, not me. I'm not joining anything. Some of them have done some pretty good things. Well, I guess they have, but so many new ones are coming along, the guy don't know which is good and which is lousy. Hey, I got a pitch last night from one of those outfits called the American War Patriots. American War Patriots? I've been getting mail from them every other day. Oh, I- yeah. What's wrong with this radio you're rejecting? Ah, well, why can't those girls upstairs learn how to put a transformer together? You've uh, been rejecting a lot of good material lately. I call them as I see them. Let me see your gauge. What for? Well, let me have it a second. I'll see that transformer. All right, try it now. Why did I do wrong? The gauge is off two degrees. All right, so it's off two degrees. Why don't you have a smoke, Hopper? This heat digs into everybody. I've been in hotter places. I know that. If I hadn't been, I'd be sitting on a bench working at it for three and a half years, and I'd be as good as you. Oh, better, I think. Quit riding me. I'm not riding you. I don't need any help from you, so lay off before I start swinging. You know, fighting would help any, I'd take you on. Ah, where's my coat? I'm... Hey, Cliff, take it easy. Cup of black coffee. Yes, sir. Make a please. Hi, Cliff. Hi. I saw you walk out of the tank. I pursued you. Why? Curiosity. What's driving you to drink? Ah, the foreman. I make a dummy out of myself and he starts to straighten me out and I get sore. Well, you're over it and you'll forget about it. Ah, I've been thinking. I'll listen. Okay. Okay, I'm back from the war. I'm lucky. I've got two arms, two legs, and two eyes, right? Right. Right. Nine out of ten guys are going to be in the same shape. Uh-huh, normal. Normal. Then what's burning me up? I met you. I feel out of things. You know why? Tell me. We both know. Because I've been scrounged. I'm robbed at a three and a half years. Somebody stole my time. Yes, you can't twist up the rest of your life worrying about lost time. I know that. But if I'd have been in school, maybe I would have had an engineering degree. I'd even made a good fraternity. I'd have had a good... You made a good fraternity. Fourteen million members. Well, I have to be doing something. 
Anyway, I'm, I'm near you. Well, that's not much to make a career over. What about going to the beach today after we're through? Sounds good to me. Okay. Anything else, mister? Piece of pie? No, no, I've had enough. It's good to know this stuff isn't getting you. But let's go back to the job. <laughs> Blew up before, Hal. Should have kept my eyes on that gauge. Oh, that's okay. Just don't let that bench get you down. After you've learned every part of a radio, well, we'll probably transfer to some other place. Sure. I've got to start somewhere. Hey, you're doing okay. I'll get down to the superintendent's office. Somebody there wants to see you. Superintendent? Uh, don't get worried. Somebody from the Marines. Checking up on you, that's right. Well, I remember you, you're Sergeant Gunnison. That's right, Harper. U.S. Marines, rehabilitation office. Here we can check up on you. Well, you're doing all right. On the level, no squawk? No squawk. You've been out of the corps a few weeks, and it's been kind of tough getting yourself reorganized. If you'll make out, no, you're no problem. But I'd like to talk to you about one. Remember Perry Kinslow? Perry? Oh, sure. Hey, he told me he met you. Yeah. I'd be a problem, too, if I had both my legs off. I'd like you to see him again. Think you could? Sure, I was going to the beach, but I could stop off on the way. Oh, thanks, Hopper. Just sort of see how things stack up, will you? <laughs> I'm so glad you stopped by, Chris. Say, tell me, what are you here for Bill Cavity? Not a word. It's funny you wouldn't write it, guys. Hey, you got a regular gymnasium here, right in the backyard. Yeah, my kid brother. Yeah, I always wanted to punch one of these bags. Go ahead, try it. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. I can still show you how to do it, even in a real chair. Now, look. Hey, the idea is to keep your eye on one spot and over the center of the bag. See? You sure to make it, son? Yeah, good. Hey, this is all right. <laughs> you ought to teach this stuff, Terry. Wait a minute. Sonny send you Dr. Gunnison? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Give me some books to read. About being a playground and stuff. How could I teach kid games? You're teaching your kid better. You can't teach him footwork. You could if you put those legs down there, Gabriel. Look, Terry, you're not doing yourself or anybody else any good by refusing to lick this thing. Yeah, maybe. Why didn't Gunny tell me this himself? Well, maybe if he said it, it'd sound too official. Look, Cliff, I got nothing against Top Side, see? But if Gunny will give me a book that'll teach a guy how to win a boxing championship with no legs. I'll read it. Room in the hospital, it's just inside. You still haven't told me how you made out with Terry. I didn't make out, Pat. I, I guess I made it even worse. Do you want to go in the water again? No, huh? No, I just want to lie here on the sand. And if you stay here, I could do this the rest of my life. Live on the beach, swim, lie in front of a fire, and listen to somebody's portable radio. Music night. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir? That's just what I'm going to do. Pat? Hmm? This is the best time I've had since I came home. And why shouldn't I keep on doing it? I might get lonesome here. Almost everybody else has something to do. I won't get lonesome. I'll be with you. You're my girl. Mm, yes, I'm your girl. Then it's all settled. We'll live on the beach till our door runs out. And then? And then we'll all be straightened out and we'll go back to work. Foreman will still be there. And Terry still won't wear his legs. That's got nothing to do with it. I just feel good here. Doing this. Pat, what about us getting married? To who? Me to you, you to me. <laughs> no, no, I'm leveling. You just think you want to marry me. I know. You sure? Positive. That's good, because it's the only thing you're positive about. I know what I want. You're lucky. I don't know what I want. You must have some idea. Cliff, I don't think my idea of heaven is to be married to a fellow who wants to lie around on the beach till he's broke. Okay. You don't like my idea of heaven? What's yours? I don't know. Sometimes I think that if I do get married again, I'd like to marry a man who makes things easy for me. Who, uh, can deliver a 20 room house and, and drink a 15 cylinder car is just a bringing home the grocery. Somebody who doesn't yell every time I hire a nurse for each one of the kids you want. You make me feel like a cheap pickup. I'm not talking about cheap pickup. I'm talking about me. You ask me what I think, and, and sometimes I think about the children. I don't mean that kind of man I was talking about. But if I do get married again, I, I think I'd like to end up with more than, than just a gold star and nothing else. Until then? I live on velvet. Where do I fit in? You're the velvet. That's great. Oh, darling. Ask me to go home, will you? I'd ask you, only it's not my car. Yes, you don't understand what I... All right, all right. Maybe you used the wrong word. But it's pretty clear what you meant. You ready? Let's take off.
a moment, we'll return with Act Three of Till the End of Time, starring Lorraine Day, Robert Nixon, and Bill Williams. Physically, Frederick Lowe is a small man. Musically, he is a giant. He did not achieve his stature overnight. Rather, he grew into it. Lowe spent some years boxing as a bantamweight, mining gold, giving writing lessons, and with Alan J. Lerner, writing musicals most noted for being unnotable. Finally, success came with the whimsical and exuberant Brigadoon, with the softness of come to me, bend to me, and the joyful surprise of it's almost like being in love. But Lowe will probably be most remembered for My Fair Lady. So many words have been spent on this single musical that possibly the only thing left to say is that Lowe, with Lerner, acquainted more people with George Bernard Shaw's Pygmalion than Shaw had. After that came Gigi for the movie. Then Camelot, which, while a critical disappointment, was a musical triumph. Frederick Fritz Lowe retired a few years ago because of his health, leaving all of us singable, hummable, thought-provoking music. Back to your producer, William Keeley. Our curtain rises on the third act of tonight's play, Till the End of Time, starring Lorraine Day as Pat, Bill Williams as Cliff, and Robert Mitchum as Bill, with Tony Barrett as Perry. They rode back from the beach in silence. In front of his house now, Cliff turns and watches Pat's car disappear around the corner. He pauses a moment, then aimlessly starts up a walk, unaware that his old friend, Bill Cabashaw, is sitting on the porch steps. Hi, Clifford. Yeah. Hey, he's breathed in the town. I thought I'd look you up. Well, why didn't you wait in the house? Came to call on you, not your folks. You got 20 bucks? 20 dollars? Well, sure. Here, thanks. Are you in any trouble? The 20 dollars you want to show you in my life? You look awful. You look kind of cute. Oh, right, start making sense, will you? You're supposed to be in New Mexico. What's the matter with you? My head is busting wide open. The old trouble I killed the place. No, I guess so. I've had these headaches for weeks. Sometimes it's better, sometimes like now. It's like clamps on my stove. Well, why don't you go to the veteran's hospital? Well, folks don't know anything about the silver plate. I don't want to worry. Come on in the hospital. Call the doctor. Wait a minute. I got a better idea. I'll buy you a drink. I got 20 bucks now. We're going to the hospital. Will you stop talking about a hospital? I want to buy you a drink. Okay, okay. Well, maybe a drink will do us both. Someday. That's for me, sweetheart. The best medicine in the world. How do you feel now, Bill? How's the head? Man, I never felt better since I've been off the horse. Tomorrow morning, I'm taking you to the hospital. I got other plans. I'm going to raise me some more dough and I'll go back looking for another ranch. Are you ready to tell me what happened to your 2,000 bucks? You ever have a town called Vegas? Well, I get off the train at Vegas, see? On account of my figure, that 5,000 bucks will buy me a better ranch than 2,000, all right? That's right. Then I get in the game. Play, I lose. I'm flat. So I ask for a goodbye drink. A little while, three guys come along and toss me out of the joint. I land on the back of my head and starts to hurt. You never got the stinking freight in New Mexico. Well, I did. I hired out as a cow hand, but my head starts driving me crazy, so I hit the road. Mm-hmm. I've got 800 bucks at home. So what? Uh, look, as soon as you get your head fixed, which we'll do the first thing in the morning, maybe I'll go in the ranch with you. Yeah, maybe you could. Maybe we could even work Perry into it, too. Sure we could. But I'm not going to any hospital. This is going to stop by itself. Well, you're no doctor. All right, then the deal is off, see? Oh, I get it, all right. This is just a... Oh, it's just a bright idea to get me to go, go to a hospital. You sit here. Where are you going? Telephone. I'm calling Perry. See what he thinks about this rank idea. Hey, waiter. How about another round here? Hello? Perry? This is Cliff Harper. Oh, how you doing, Cliff? Listen. Bill Cabbage back in town. That plate in his skull's been acting up, and he won't let me take him to a hospital. Look. You know where to reach that fella Gunnison from the rehabilitation office? Sure. Well, get a hold of him, will you, Perry? Tell him to come over here. All right, well. Oh, it's some joint on Western Avenue. It's called the Swan Club. And tell him to hurry, will you? The guy's really hurt. Huh? I'll call him right away. Tell him, Chris. 
What's the matter, Terry? One of my buddies sick, Ma. Great cabbage job. Well, you've got to help him. Yeah, yeah. Gotta take a bit if you need it. You're gonna be. But I can't help it. Yes, you can. In a wheelchair. How can I, Ma? How can I? Son, I watched you fight over 20 fights. Every time you got hurt, it hurt me, too. But that didn't matter, because you're a good fighter and you fight. When do the drop? Look, Ma, I'm washed up with fighting. Different kinds of fighting. You just stop talking foolish, Ma. What can a guy do when he's got no legs? There was a man who lost the use of his legs when he was 39 years old. He didn't quit. He got to be president. Think about it, Terry. Think about a friend who needs you. Well, two still made legs and a couple of canes, but they're going to take me down as far as Western Avenue. <laughs> you know what, Bill? That ranch still makes a lot of sense. Of course it makes sense. That's what Perry said, didn't it? Sure. Sure he did, sure. And now I'm going to make another phone call. Who to? Well, I'm going to tell my girl. She should know everything I know. No secrets. We're both calling. What's the name, Clippy? What's the name? Clippy, 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 Clippy. Pat, this is Cliff. Hello, Tower. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm with a friend. We're discussing a big deal that involves you. What did I do with your dad? Patricia, I'm serious. Give me that phone. Patricia, how'd you like to go live on a ranch? Well, who are you? There are a lot of things I could tell you, but none of them is as interesting as the fact that I'm Cliff's buddy. Now, uh, how, how about this here ranch here, Patricia? What kind of a ranch? Outdoor ranch. Well, I think everyone should get a lot of fresh air. You like chicken? Yeah, wonderful. Fried. Okay, we'll raise chicken. Fried. Horses, too. Maybe some, uh, pigs, even. Why, now, where's Cliff? He's standing right here, right next to me. We're in a very exclusive rendezvous on Western Avenue known as the Swan Club. In order to get in here, you have to push the door open. Let me talk to you, will you? Just let her talk to you. Hello, Patricia? Look, I called to find out if you'd like to go in with this ranch. Uh, I want yes or no, nothing else. Get out of there, Cliff. You can come up here and talk. Uh, give me no for Nancy? Cliff, please. Very yeah. well, very well. That's all I wanted to know. I don't think we can count on her, Bill. Ah, forget about it. Where it comes to work, we'll raise women, too. Hey. Hey, look. Look who just came in. Terry. And he's walking. Let's go help him. No, no, play it down like it was nothing at all. Get a load of him. Get down, will you? Hubba, hubba, hubba. Ah. What gives you, Cat? Give us a lot. Pull up a chair, Mr. Kinslow. We're going to get us a ranch, close you and me. Oh, oh, stop talking and get the man a drink, will you? There's a way to. Let's get the way to get him a drink from the bar. I'll make it a double, sir. You got some catching up to do. Oh, sure. Cliff, I don't get this. Look, you didn't have to come here, did you, Terry? But you said Bill was in trouble. Well, that Peyton has been killing him. And I want to get him to a hospital, so I figured Sergeant's going to see you the guy to help. Did you reach him? No. Well, maybe it's just as well. Well, I like it. Yeah. I, uh, I figure the size of the ranch depends on how much cash we can raise. Oh, oh. Yeah, Perry. Let's drink that little old ranch. Oh, right on, right on. Well, Cliff, you can have it. This is a nice ranch you have here, Cliff. Pat. Could I see you alone for a minute? Yeah, you can see me alone for a minute. Excuse me, fellas, uh... What'd you come down here for? If you're drinking, you might do something silly. Look, go on home and pack your bag. Where are we going? New Mexico to buy that land. Look, wherever you go, you're going to have to face the same problem. Oh, we'll see new places. We'll see new people. I'll see new people too. It drives me crazy. And you'll be happy. Actually, you have no boots. Well, who has? The men who are never coming back. Ah, oh, here we go. Right back to Johnny Ruskin. You put a picture back on the table? I'm going, Pat, with you or without you. Without me. Why do you have gone? We had company. So I see. You guys have just bought us a drink. I hope you should meet our buddy, Cliff Harper. How are you, Harper? How are you? My name's Mitchell. This fellow here is Artie Lawson. This is Gene Prater. Ah, uh -huh. Then we all belong to the same club we sort of wandered over. What do you mean, the same club? Why, we're all ex-servicemen, aren't we? Are we? We wanted to talk to you fellas about our organization. You've probably heard of us. The American War Patriots. Know what we're going to do for you, boys? How'd you like to have a bonus of $200 a month for the rest of your life? America for the Americans. That's, uh, that's the kind of free country we were fighting for. Well, go on, Mr. What else? Well, of course, I don't know whether you men are eligible or not. We, uh, we got certain restrictions. What does that mean? Well, we're not interested in everybody, see? We got rules. For instance, there are some religions we don't like. Oh, I get it. You know, Mr. Mitchell, we had a friend named Maxie Klein. If Maxie was here, he'd probably stop you right in your eye. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But Maxie was dead on Guadalcanal. 
So just for him, I'm going to suck. And for you other two. Why are you drunk and farmer? You're about to get to all pay. Not me, will you? Come on, push him to me, Chris. Push him to me. Here you go, Pay. Mighty lucky thing the police brought him straight here to the hospital. He had to operate. I had a patent knife, so I wouldn't go around looking for some insight. They weren't looking for it. Came to them, Doc. Who are you? Sergeant Gunnison, Marine Rehabilitation Office. Uh, the police called me. You're going to operate on this boy, Sergeant, right away. But, yeah, Bill. If I make this trip, I'm, I'm going back to think and quick and get me a car hand job. It'll take a little longer to get that ranch. You'll be home. Listen. Listen real good. Bring him in there. Third floor surgery. Can I wait here? Yes, you can wait here. Oh, Stark. What was that about, please? Well, you boys are in the clear. But they're holding those three men, Mitchell, Ross, and Prager. <laughs> you guys can assist in nailing them. Oh, I, uh, I called your mom, Terry. I told her I'd run you home. You'd better call Michael. Hey, it's okay. I already did. You're staying, huh? Yeah. yeah let's go, Terry. I got to get Tabitha's papers squared away at the admitting office. Yeah, right, right with you. Clint. You call me? Soon as I... I'll call you, Terry. Good to be back in the field. Hello, Chris. Dad. I called the hospital. They said you were still waiting here. How's your friend? I don't know yet. They, they haven't brought him down yet from surgery. I'm glad to see him, Dad. Anything you want to tell me? Yes. What happened tonight, I, I'm glad it happened. It showed me that if you believe something, you... You better get out there and fight for it. Oh, a lot of things have happened to me since I've come back. And, well, I've, I've got a good job, or, although I don't think I want to do it all my life. I'd like to do it with my girl all my life if she'd let me. Sure, Chris. And right now, standing here in the waiting room of a hospital with nothing beside him, I'm better off than Terry and luckier than Tabitha. It'll take time, I guess. Sure. You didn't make yourself into a soldier overnight. You can't make yourself into a civilian overnight. We're going to stay here, Dad. Maybe you better run along. I'll wait for you, son. This is what I did when I waited for you once before. Huh? Twenty-three years ago. The night you were born, Chris. The night you were born. who got us off to such a promising start in 1947. The Rainbow, Bill Williams, and Bob Mitchum. Nice. Good night and many thanks to each of you. <laughs> this is William Keeley, saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in our cast tonight were Clark Gordon as Pinky, Leo Cleary as Mr. Harper, Bud Widdham as Sergeant Gunnison, Regina Wallace as Mrs. Harper, and Eddie Marr, Richard Benedict, Norman Field, Ed Emerson, Tyler McVeigh, George Meese, Noreen Gamel, and Charles Steele. 
Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. <laughs>